Is it, uh, it, can you tell if anybody's tuned in? Uh-huh. Is there? Six right now. Ooh. Three, two, uh, hang on, let me click the go live button here. Go like this when we're on. He's used to this. Yeah, I know. Okay, let's build And we're back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm Dirk Friel at Training Peaks, and I'm here with Gear Fisher, our CEO of Training Peaks and co founder. And a special guest today is Yanni Brakovic from Team Astana. Thanks for joining us, Yanni. Sure. No yeah. Problem. If you've watched the Tour de France lately, it's all about getting through the first week of the tour. And Yanni, unfortunately, did not <laughs> make it through the first week of the tour. You started the tour, Tour de France, four times. You've crashed out within the first week twice, which yep. is not unusual for a lot of guys, probably. Yeah. Um, and you got ninth last year. Mm-hmm. So um, that how did how did it happen this year? Was, first of all, was that your only crash, or you know did you crash other times prior to the? the <laughs> no, big actually, I crashed in a, in a stage one, but that wasn't very bad actually. But um, then stage six was just a stupid crash, but um, I hit my knee and then opened my knee, so it was over like in in a second. Yeah. Fortunately, yeah. What's going through your mind right there? I mean, you train the whole season basically to to peak for that race. Yeah, I mean, I was hoping I could continue, so I finished the the stage, and then then they had a mobile hospital at the finish, and uh, once the, the the surgeon and 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 everybody saw the the knee, they said that yeah, it's impossible. It's just like it's too serious and too dangerous. And anyways, I after a couple of hours, I couldn't move the knee anymore. So um, it was pretty clear. Uh, yeah. Was so what has happened since then? I mean, you you flew home. Yeah, I spent a week at home hoping that uh, after three days I'll be okay. But uh, I wasn't okay. So it took me a good 10 days. Um, after 10 days... Uh, I was able to to ride a little bit, and then after two weeks, I was I was good to go. So um, I've been training for a um, good ten days now, and then uh, the legs are coming back. So yeah. I'm pretty happy. And I should have mentioned we're here in the Training Peaks offices in Boulder, Colorado. We're not in Slovenia. You live in Slovenia. Yeah. Um, why Why Boulder? You know, and have you been here before? And I mean, I, I've been coming here uh, for the past five years, and um, I like it here. I mean, um, the people, the training, mountains, altitude, um, weather is great. Um, everything's perfect. So um, there's some good riders around here too, right? Yeah. We were out today That's, riding and uh, ran into Peter Stetna and a guy named T.J. Van Garderen. So uh, some good talent around here yeah. to kind of team up with. So uh, yeah. Um, and what are you training for now? What's the next uh, race on your program? I'm flying home on Sunday and I'll do um, a small race in, in, in Spain as a preparation. Um, it's called Tour of Burgos and after that I'll do um, Tour of Spain. So hopefully um, I can finish the Vuelta and I can get a good result there. Yeah, so w- how early did you start looking at the Vuelta stages after you crashed? I mean that prepare. night. I, obviously, I I, <laughs> I hadn't had any sleep that night, so um, I had a few hours to think about uh, my next project, my next goals, right. and then of course that's that's gonna be. Yeah, better. so that that's interesting. I mean, you kind of just switch on a dime and go right to all right. Yeah. And that's the athletic mindset, right? Yeah. I mean, it's really hard to to crash out and 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 uh, and leave the tour but um it, it doesn't make any sense to 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 cry and and, and be disappointed and sad yeah. all the time you just have to focus for for uh, new goals and and um go for it yeah 
a lot of the viewers may not know, but you actually held the leader's jersey in the Vuelta. Yeah. yeah. What was year was that? 2006, I believe. That was my first year as a pro. It was kind of unexpected, but uh, yeah, it was kind of cool. Hopefully you can do that again, maybe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Hold it a bit longer Yeah. Uh, this time. Um, and then you'll do the World Championships after that. That's the plan, yeah. Um, if I... Hopefully, I'll finish uh, pretty strong uh, Volta, and then and then uh, uh, two weeks after there's uh, the Worlds. And uh, yeah, you know, and, and a lot of people may have seen your power files online. You're one of the athletes, one of the few athletes, you know, racing at that tour level that actually openly, you know, tweets out and and shares your files within hours of, of stage finishes. Unfortunately, you weren't there this year. Mm -hmm. um, you know, with the leaders. But last year, climbing with the leaders, you know, the max 30-minute power output we saw from you was on the very last climbing day of the tour on the on the Col de Mont, I think mm -hmm. is how you mm -hmm. pr pronounce that. And that was 5.9 watts per kilo. And those guys were right there with you. And the final climb of the day was 5.8 watts per kilo. And everybody's talking about Froome's power data right now. So, you know, um, unfortunately, you weren't there, so we can't really see yeah. what Froome may have been doing. But... Um, Tell us more about, you know, why you share and, and... I mean, as a cyclist, I'm also curious what people are doing. So I imagine mm, other cycling enthusiasts would be very curious what us pros are doing. So uh, I think it's, um, for me, I'm happy to help to, 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 to show people what... Uh, what we're doing, uh, what kind of power we're producing at, uh, at these uh, stage races. So uh, I'm happy. I'm just happy to help. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, I've talked to Gear a lot about how cool it would be if it was more in the commentary. You know, if it was telemetry, we could see the data, um, the post-race analysis. If it's a little more like you know Formula One or NASCAR, we all know the results at the finish. But what did it take to to complete? You yeah. know, and and perform you know at that level and you're a climber your your natural strengths are climbing and how long have you been training with power and and maybe give us a little tip or two since uh since that's your strength how do you train to be a better climber i don't know i just <laughs> <laughs> gear needs to know <laughs> I mean, just, right? I mean, he did love to us you know the problem with power is with the power meter is just once you have it you always try to, to improve, like, to get higher numbers. And many times uh, that's that's not a good idea because if you're chasing the numbers uh, sooner or later, um, you'll blow up or, or burn out or, or just you have to be, you have to be smart to, to um, train with power and, and do it uh, day by day. How, mm. how long have you been training with power? Since 06, I believe. How about training peaks? When did you... When did you discover Turning Peaks? How long ago? Actually, I met using? you 2007 at Tour of Georgia. But you had already been a customer. I mean, yeah, you, you, you yeah. lit up your laptop and there were all your files. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's a long so time ago. So you won the Tour of Georgia 2007. Yeah. That was a pre, uh, your first big victory, if you will, yeah. in a stage yeah. race. Um, so been using Turning Peaks since then. Um, and the, you won the Dauphiné. Yeah. In 2010, uh, Alberto Contador was second, and TJ Van Garderen was third. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that was Lap Duas, and it got down to just you and Contador. Mm -hmm. How many times do you think Contador attacked you to try and get rid of you? Whew, I can't really remember, but a lot. Like, yeah. at the end, it really didn't, like, I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, yeah. Yeah, it didn't just make any sense. Give it to sense. me. Come yeah. on, bring it on. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's a great YouTube video as well as a Sufferfest. So um, shout out to Sufferfest for that video. Um, great indoor workout video. Um, how did you get started um, as a cyclist? I don't know. I kinda, before, I wasn't into sports at all. And, and then in high school, I had a schoolmate who was, um, who was actually a pretty good cyclist. And um, like, I was like, okay, maybe I'll, I'll try. And I tried. I, I I fell in love immediately, and the uh, first couple of years were really hard because um, at that time I was uh, well behind everybody else, and uh, it was hard. But um, after two, three years, uh, I got better, and uh, um, 
I became a world champion in 2004 and uh, best prof professional in 2005. So. Right. Now, you obviously spend a lot of time on the bike, a lot of miles. What kind of stuff do you do off the bike? Just resting most <laughs> of the time. Yeah, it's just like you try to recover as much as possible. Um, people would think like, okay, you're six hours a day on the bike and then you still have 18 hours of which eight sleep. So you have 10 hours of free time, but that's not the case. Uh, training is not um, over when you climb off the bike. It's just uh, the whole the whole day you have to recover and uh, uh, take care of your nutrition and, and have massage, stretching and that kind of stuff. So um, when, when I'm training seriously, um, I just try to focus on training and recovering. Yeah, when you're riding up to 30 hours a week, 28 yeah. hours a week, uh, yeah. really wear, wears you down and recovery is exactly. of the essence. So what are some tips for recovery for folks out there that are starting to ramp it up? And uh... I don't I mean, obviously after the ride you have to, you have to try uh, to recover uh, as much as possible, have a recovery drink, uh, good food, quality food, um, maybe a massage, um, and that kind of stuff. And sleep? And You're nap. probably a good yeah. sleeper. Yeah. A nap? A nap? Yeah. <laughs> Take naps. That's, that's reserved for professionals only. <laughs> they uh, typically get to nap. Always have to do yard work or something like that, it seems. Yeah, definitely. So uh, the Volta, uh, Nibali will be a team leader there. Yeah. And you'll be there to um, support him. And what, uh, tell us about this year's Volta. What, what, what does it look like? And, you know, and how are you going to approach the Volta? I mean, it's, it's hard as always. And stages are not so long, so that's going to be fast. And it and, uh, has 11 mountain top finishes, mm. so it should be spe spectacular. Right, and it opens with a team time trial. Yeah. Which is, uh, normally team time trials on the tour really aren't all that long. No, not anymore. Uh, at the Vuelta, I think it's pretty long this year, so it should uh, open some Yeah, for an opening already. stage. Yeah. Now, I don't think a whole lot of people really get the dynamics of an international cycling team, but it's not like you're together all the time. So you're going to go do a team time trial, which is critical for the GC. How many hours or days or how much have you trained with the team on TT bikes as a group? Well, um, I would say this year we haven't done much of that. Maybe before Tirreno Adriatico, two days. And for the Vuelta, we'll just uh, do it a few days after uh, before the race. So we'll get maybe an hour or two of, of group riding, not uh, not more. Do you guys go into a, a, a team time trial with a strategy? Like a, certain guys are supposed to pull more, or is it just you do what you can, and then if you fall off, you fall off? No, there's a there's a stretch, a strategy. Um, there's a, there's a lineup, so it it's important who follows who. And then you have stronger guys and weaker guys. Stronger guys would pull a little bit longer, weaker guys um, a little bit less. So um, it has to be fluid. Yeah, right. there's always a strategy that goes into <coughs> everything, I suppose. Yeah. Right. Well, so, well, thank you so much for uh, sure. spending time with us today. And uh, if you're in Boulder, you might see this guy out on the roads and... Um, you know, you did the Pro Challenge last year, not yeah. this year, but we'd love to have you back for the Pro Challenge. I'll sometime. do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot for coming out to sure. uh, office here in Boulder. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah. We'll and have more of these, so stay tuned to Twitter and Facebook, uh, Training Peaks feeds, and we'll have more live, spur-of-the-moment type uh, interviews to come. All right. Thank you. Thanks.